Morning, everyone. This is uh, Michael Roman with Houston Grass, and welcome to the Houston Grass podcast. We're uh, late, late July, and uh, we're gonna put out a little more information uh, uh, regarding the heat and how hot and dry it is. We've gotten a couple of showers the last last couple of days, but it is uh, we're breaking records all over the United States. And all, all, we, all we're hearing about is out this heat, 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 and uh, not a lot of relief in sight. So we want to cover cover some topics here this morning. The general trend we've been doing is trying to stick to things that uh, each month that are kind of applicable to this time right now. But this morning, I've got a couple of those, uh, several of them we've talked about before, chinch bugs and, and whatnot. Uh, but we're going to cover a few topics that are kind of kind of year round, and some of them are even uh, we're going to talk about ryegrass a little bit. That that's usually generally more of a of a late fall winter time uh, proposition. Uh, first thing that uh, we get asked a whole lot, and it's it's something we get that doesn't matter the time of year uh, applies year round. Is 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 there a St. Augustine grass seed? Uh, there, there is not. Uh, I, I know it would be great if there were to fill in those little little spots in the yard that doesn't. Uh, it's is it is it worth the effort to go and you got you got to cut it cut out a space for the new block of grass or several blocks of grass or whatever. Wouldn't it be great if we could just go kind of scratch the dirt and throw a few seeds out there and, and watch it go? But uh, unfortunately, there is not. I, I I am not sure of the science behind it. Uh, but I, I know that when you when you look at St. Augustine and certainly certain times of the year, you see that it, it produces that little seed head, that little stalk of multiple seeds on it that it kicks off. Uh, and it, it, it seems that you would somebody would figure out how to get those off and uh, get off those stalk uh, and, and put them out there and be able to sell them. But I, I don't know if those seeds are sterile or that no one has just found an economical way to, uh, to harvest something like that. Uh, I don't know what, what exactly it is behind that, but I do know that, uh, it doesn't exist. You can't go online and buy a bag of St. Augustine grass seed. And when we, we plant 10, 20, 30 acres at a time at our farm, when we're redoing areas and stuff like that, we take the same blocks of grass that we would sell to you out here and we feed them into a machine that chops them up into four inch pieces or so, drops them on the ground, then a roller comes behind them and kind of smashes them down. Uh, and they're they're spaced out a few inches apart. Uh, and then we water them profusely, just, just like you have to when you buy the 16 by 24 inch blocks of grass from us. So uh, there there is no seed. The only, it's called vegetative propagation, meaning it takes, uh, you've got to take a chunk of the plant, uh, to start a new one. Uh, so you've got, got to, uh, at the very least, you have to use, to use the plugs, which, uh, we, we don't encourage anyone to do because it's so hard to get it kicked off. Uh, farms and stuff have the chemicals and the expertise to be able to fight the weeds in the meantime. But the problem with plugs is that you, wherever there is not a piece of grass, weeds, uh, just naturally occurring seeds that are blown around out in mother nature, uh, will land on that empty dirt and they'll uh, kick up a, a weed and you've got to be able to battle those uh, in the meantime until that grass gets closed across. Homeowners have no business. They, they can't get their hands on most of the chemicals that these farms use and they certainly don't have the expertise to, to do that. So that's something that uh, plugs is just something that's uh, not a good homeowner application, at least in our part of the world. I don't know, maybe other parts of the US that that works for other types of grass, maybe some of the cool season grasses or something like that, but it's not here for the Texas Gulf Coast. So solid sodding is certainly the way to go. Uh, I know I'm in the business of selling grass, so I figure I'm supposed to say that, but I'm just telling if it were my yard or my friend's yard, I'm telling them this is, <laughs> this is, this is what I would do. So uh, anyway, just wanted to, wanted to touch on that. Uh, Types of grass uh, is another thing that uh, we're, we're seeing lots of folks uh, look for. They're, they're, they're types of types of grass assumed for, for our part of Texas. Uh, there are a lot. Uh, 
the one that everybody grew up with probably is probably St. Augustine if you live right here along the coast. Uh, as you move more towards the Austin, San Antonio area, uh, mm-hmm. more inland Bermuda grasses and, and Dallas to Bermuda grasses come become uh, uh, show up a lot more. I still don't know that St. Augustine might not still be what you what you find, but. We carry, I'll talk about what we carry and I'll, I'll mention a few others that are out there as well. But in, in general terms, there is St. Augustine and there are a couple of varieties of that. There is Bermuda grasses, which is the finer bladed stuff that you see like on golf courses and sports fields. And then there are zoysia grasses uh, of which we carry three different varieties. Uh, and those are, uh, they're, they're, You've probably seen them. You don't see zoysia near as much as you see the uh, St. Augustine and the Bermuda grasses, though. Uh, there, there are fine bladed ones. There are thicker bladed ones, and uh, there are probably, I always just say the number thirty, but there are a lot of different types of zoysias. <clears throat> we and we like and we only carry three of them. Let me let me touch on uh, the, the St. Augustine. So we carry Raleigh St. Augustine, which is what we keep out here on our yard year round. You can come and buy pieces of it uh, year round, and, and we keep it we keep it in stock for the most part. Uh, uh, that that is what everybody is used to. Uh, that one requires at least six or seven hours of direct sunlight per day to uh, to survive. So planting it up underneath trees and whatnot that that's not uh that would be ill-advised uh so we also carry palmetto saint augustine for that reason palmetto saint augustine is the is looks just like the raleigh saint augustine for all intent purposes and uh it requires at least four to five hours of direct sunlight per day four hours is kind of an absolute minimum uh and as far as i know there is not there are lots of grasses that tout shade tolerance but I do not know of one for our part of the world that can survive on less than four hours of direct sunlight per day. Uh, so the Palmetto St. Augustine is, is, is what you would use in, in that case. And you can, by the way, mix those two. Uh, say you have a lot of Raleigh in your yard, but you're noticing some thin spots from a tree. First thing I'm going to tell you to do is to thin out those trees, raise them, thin them as aggressively as you possibly can and get as much sunlight in there because as you can because any grass that you have is going to do better the more sunlight that you can get on it so uh just keep that in mind but uh i would say you, you definitely again if you have some thin spots as far as mixing on thin spots in the yard you don't have to replace your whole yard with palmetto st augustine you could put the palmetto st augustine just in the problem area and and be just fine you might notice it a difference for a little while. Uh, they may go in and out of dormancy at different times within a, but it's still within a couple of weeks. So you might notice one staying greener a little bit longer when we get to when we start get that first uh, first freeze or whatever. So, uh, anyways, you, you can certainly do that. That's same, the St. Augustine's that we carry, uh, and those are generally I, I, there are others out there, but those are the two that you certainly hear most often. Uh, Bermuda grasses. We carry uh, Tex Turf 10 and Tifway 419. Another one that you will hear, those are very common names. Another one that you will hear out there a lot is Common Bermuda. Common Bermuda is what generally they use on roadsides. Speaking of those seed heads we were talking about earlier, Common Bermuda, it's the one that has the little sprout that shoots up and then it sprouts off three little seed heads that, that shoot off that little stalk. I don't know the technical terms for those things, but uh, I do know that it produces a seed head and that uh, it is commercially available. It's what they're blowing out on the sides of the road and that green slurry stuff when they just build a new road or something like that, a new building, and uh, they need to cover the dirt up. They put that's common Bermuda grass seeds in that slurry that uh, that come up, and it it, ha- it certainly has its place. Uh, it's kind of an ugly, stringy, coarse grass that we certainly don't recommend anybody put in their yard. We don't, we don't care the reason we don't carry it because we're selling people uh, grass that's going to end up in somebody's yard. But uh, it, it has its place because of that seed head. Say a drought, if it, the grass is put along the side of a road and a drought comes along and it's a bad one and it just kills everything back to the dirt. Eventually, when it rains, that seed head hits the ground, and uh, those seeds are laying there, and they'll it'll come back from those seeds. So uh, it's got its place. It's 
not in a homeowner's yard in, in our opinion. The closest thing we carry to it is called TexTurf 10. It's a, uh, it's a denser turf. It's not as coarse stem. The, the leaves are not as coarse. They're, they're finer and it doesn't produce, uh, uh, it might produce a couple of the seed heads, but they've, they've pretty much, uh, they tried to breed that out of it so that because those seed heads are not very sightly. So, uh, they, they've, they got those out of it too. So it's a, it's a nicer turf. I, it, it gets used in homeowners yards uh, quite, quite a bit. It's uh, a lot of the Tifway 419 and the Texturf 10 are kind of kind of interchangeable. I would say you see one in people's yards and one on sports fields and one on the golf courses. I will say on golf courses, Tifway 419 is what is used on the tee boxes and on the fairways. Uh, usually the, the uh, putting greens are, are a hybrid of some fancy type of grass that they can mow super duper short. So, but the Tifway 419 is kind of, kind of specific to, uh, to, to golf courses, but homeowners yards, sports fields, stuff like that. The Tex Turf 10 and Tifway 419 can both be used. The Tifway 419 is even thinner bladed and can be mowed even shorter than the Tex Turf 10. Both of them, uh, you get better results mowing them with a real mower. The the mower that it looks like the old old timey kind. You just pushed and they were self propelled and they or, or they they were propelled by the wheels actually turning on the outside. Now when I when I say uh, a rotary mower, that's a traditional mower everybody's used to. It's got the big big blade underneath that spins like that. The the real mowers are the ones that turn like this and they cut the grass like scissors. Uh, Again, they have their place, but they are now again, they're gas powered too, by the way, they're just like your regular push mower, but I think they started about $3,000 and they're very high maintenance because you have to sharpen all those blades frequently. And, uh, if you hire a service to come and use one of those in your yard, uh, obviously they're going to charge a little bit more too, probably a lot more. And, uh, but when you drive by somebody's house and they've got grass out front, that looks like carpet that's what they're using. They're, they're probably mowing it every three or four days and they're using a real, a real mower and Bermuda grasses definitely do better with a real mower than they do with a rotary mower. Can they be cut with a rotary mower? Absolutely. Every pallet of grass that leaves here, that's, that's Bermuda grass. I would say 99 and a half percent of them are mowed with a, with a rotary mower, uh, when, once they leave here. Uh, so, that that's just a fact. And as far as mowing goes, we also carry uh, three types of zoysia. We carry the uh, emerald and the cavalier, or the fine bladed zoysias, and then we carry palisade zoysia, which is a little bit coarser. Again, all of those do better with uh, when when you mow them with a real style mower. We sell a fair amount of it. The main thing we sell here is Raleigh St. Augustine. Second would be Palmetto St. Augustine. And then, uh, the, the zoysias are certainly, certainly last They're they're more expensive. Uh, I would, I would even say that the fine bladed zoysias, the Emerald and Cavalier are a little higher maintenance. I, I think it's mainly because they, they're not very aggressive growers. And if they hit any bump in the road, for whatever reason, drought, stress, shade, or whatever, you get a thin spot and weeds pop up. And so that, that's, uh, that's one of the drawbacks to the fine blooded zoysias. However, they are not aggressive growers and they don't grow up into your flower beds and stuff like that, like a St. Augustine or the Bermudas and stuff like that would do. On the flip side of that, there's the Palisade zoysia, which is, uh, it doesn't, it has about the shade tolerance of regular Raleigh St. Augustine, six or seven hours of direct sunlight. Whereas the, 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 the Emerald and Cavalier, the finer bladed zoysias, if you tell me you have shade and you want zoysia, those are your options. They, they can survive on that four or five hours of direct sunlight. Uh, no problem. They all do better if you can mow them with a real style mower, uh, specifically the Emerald and Cavalier, they really do need that, that real mower. Not many people do it at, at our farm. It's the only thing that we, that we mow it with it. The, the blades are softer, I would say for all the zoysias, but they're tougher. And so unless you keep an extremely sharp blade, it kind of rips the grass more than it cuts it when it's, uh, when it, when it's cutting. So that's, that's something to keep in mind as far as the fine bladed zoysias. I say they're a little bit higher maintenance and there's a reason for that. There's a couple of, couple of issues. They look fantastic. Uh, they certainly look fantastic when they, when they come from our farm, because it looks like carpet, because we've been mowing it with a golf course mower ever since it started, started growing. So, uh, it's, uh, 
it, it, I would say it's a commitment. Most, like you said, the grass that leaves here is probably going to end up getting cut with a with a rotary mower, uh, and it's going to be taller than it's than it's intended to be. All I can say is keep a sharp blade, and uh, and it, it will probably probably be fine. The Palisade zoysia, it it's, uh, it, it grows a little bit more aggressively, uh, and it grows faster. It is a little bit more tolerant of mowing with a uh, with a rotary style mower, the traditional mower that everybody has. Uh, its only drawback is if it's, it's shade tolerance. It does not quite have the shade tolerance. If I, if I had to pick one grass to put in my yard and I had all the sun that, that it needed, Palisade Zoysia is what I would use. And I say that because it is different than everybody is used to. It's prettier than, than I think most of the grasses out there. Uh, it's very dense, very soft, and I mean, you walk across it and uh, you leave footprints. It, it's very, very dense, and uh, it's just a really nice grass. It is very easy to take care of. I tell anybody, if you've had St. Augustine your whole life and you're used to taking care of St. Augustine, it's pretty much the same program. Watering's the same, fertilization's the same, mowing's the same. Uh, you can get away with using that rotary mower. Uh, so there there are certainly some uh, some great attributes of the of the palisade zoysia uh all the zoysias are are are, are fine but uh if i'm if i'm picking it's going to be the palisades as long as i get plenty of sunlight watering requirements are are, are pretty much the same uh like i said it, it's just pr pretty straightforward and it is really nice looking grass i guess my, the, the one drawback to it is price all the zoysias are are more expensive than the saint augustines uh we, we keep our price list always updated online. You can look, but uh, right now, just thinking, uh, I, I think that the zoysia is probably 60 or $70 a pallet more, uh, which is, I don't know, whatever, 30% more than uh, than the St. Augustine. So and that, that goes across the board for all the zoysias. So uh, another drawback, I guess, for the zoysias would be a, like, we only sell Raleigh St. Augustine by the piece. So all these other grasses, including zoysia, if you have a problem with a little area, you can't just come buy a few pieces of grass to do a repair because we can, we only sell it by the 450 square foot pallet. And, uh, unfortunately we just don't have enough requests for the, for zoysia to be able to, if somebody needs 20, 30 pieces, I can't, uh, it never works out to where we can get somebody those, those pieces and get several people lined up at the same time. We, we tried before, Occasionally it works out, but it is it's very infrequent that that works out. So that would be a drawback to to some of these uh, some of these other grasses that we sell. Uh, those are the varieties that we carry. Uh, I, I would say the there, there are other types of the St. Augustines. That's kind of what's out there. The two that we carry, the Bermudas. There's a couple of others that have that they've come out with. Uh, but the two that we carry, the Texturf 10 and the Tifway 419, are the, are the ones that you hear most frequently. And uh, the zoysias, people call us all the time. And I, I think that there's a lot of other farms out there that carry a lot of different ones. And they ask me to, well, how does it compare to, to Zeon or uh, El Toro or, or something like that? I do not know. Uh, speaking in general terms, there's the coarser bladed like the Palisades, and there's the uh, finer bladed like the Emerald and Cavalier. Those are the three we have chosen uh, for, for lots of different reasons, and uh, they, they seem to fill the bill for, for, for most folks. So uh, anyway, that's the, the uh, types, types of grasses. Uh, the best grasses, uh, I'm a, when, when I'm doing research, I'm a, <laughs> I love that, I love that term. What, what is the best for this? And uh, uh, so, so I can relate. Uh, I think I kind of touched on that uh, with, with our varieties there. Uh, it, the first thing I'm going to ask you, if you just called me and asked that question, I'm, the first question I'm going to ask you is how much shade do you have? And uh, if you tell me I've got no shade, I'm, and, and also my budget is, is kind of uh, flexible, let's say, then I'd push you towards the Palisade Zoysia. I've never had a person that said I'm disappointed with Palisade Zoysia. Uh, oh, my neighbors love it. The kids love it. it. It's, it's just good stuff. If you're, if you're willing to pay a little bit more or say you don't have a large area, uh, and you're not, you're not worried about an extra 60, 70 bucks a pallet or whatever it is. Uh, 
so so it, it doesn't add up now when you're trying to cover an acre that's going to add up uh that 60 or 70 dollars is going to add up and uh so maybe you consider the regular old raleigh st augustine if you've got plenty of sunlight uh easy to take care of uh uh you can come get pieces of it if you have a problem somewhere everybody in the world has heard of it and can diagnose issues with it uh so that the, the uh, th those would probably be my top picks if I've got plenty of sunlight. Uh, when I, when somebody tells me that uh, they're they're lacking in sunlight a little bit, I'm going to steer you to Palmetto St. Augustine before I'm going to steer you to fine blooded zoysias. Not only are the fine blooded zoysias a lot more expensive, uh, but they're uh, they, they do come come along with with some of the issues that we talked about. So uh, if you've got shade, I'm, I'm going Palmetto St. Augustine. Uh, if you just, if you just, you do want something different, you want something that looks real nice, you've got some shade, uh, the Cavalier and Emerald are, are definitely, uh, good options. Uh, you will notice in this list of best that I have thrown out there, I have not mentioned Bermuda grasses. <laughs> uh, Bermuda grasses have their place and a lot of neighborhoods have made folks, they, for drought tolerance reasons, uh, these these uh, master plan community people that do this, they, they've decided that Bermuda grass is the way to go. Bermuda grass is, uh, has got its place. As far as I'm concerned, it's out in the middle of giant open fields, sports fields, golf courses, in the front of buildings, uh, places that have no shade problems. Bermuda grass needs 100% sunlight. I don't mean a, a a little bit this time of day or what if i get half a day or seven hours or anything like that i mean 100 percent sunlight a tree a fence a structure like a roof line that's uh cast a shadow because of the time of day and the way your house faces all those things will make bermuda grass disappear in a hurry i have a friend that uh i think he lives in one of those communities he started out uh, it was a new house had two or three oak trees in the front yard and lived there for five or six years and it was fine. The oak trees started getting some size on them. We have now replaced his grass three times and uh, there's it eventually just becomes dirt. These communities make you put these trees in the front in the front yard and uh, they don't bend on that. And uh, it, it, Bermuda grass needs 100% sunlight is all I can say. And uh, it is, it, it, that, that is its biggest drawback. It is, it is, it does have better drought tolerance than most of these other grasses that I'm talking that, that we've talked about, which is the reason they designate it. Uh, but it, uh, it, it it's gotta have hundred percent sunlight and there are not many homeowner situations where you can tell me that all over your yard, every corner, uh, say you decided not to plant any trees. You live out in the middle of nowhere and you get that option and you, you didn't plant trees or you'll you'll do something different underneath the trees because you've got that flexibility uh there, there's going to be some place that you're going to lose the grass because uh because it does doesn't get enough sunlight so uh anyway if you had the choice as far as best goes if somebody asked me that's what i'm telling <laughs> that's what i'm telling my friends uh is that this is the advice that i would give them so uh uh ryegrass we, we occasionally get questions especially as we approach winter about ryegrass uh ryegrass is a seed you buy by the bag uh if, if you buy drive by uh, the front of neighborhoods or someone's yard and you see that it's green in uh january or february it's because they overseeded with ryegrass they call it overseeding so you take your, your grass, whatever you have there, your St. Augustine or your Bermuda grass, whatever, you cut it down real short in uh, probably, I don't know when they start doing that, late September, October, and they cut the grass down short, they put use your fertilizer spreader or something like it, and push it out there with that seed, put it out there real thick and, and water it, and that ryegrass comes up through it, and it basically gives you a green green yard for uh, for, for the winter. It has good shade tolerance. I don't think it requires a whole lot of water. Uh, they use it to feed cows is, is, where, is, is what I know ryegrass from, but uh, it's, I guess it's good. The good is that it gives you a green yard in the winter. There are a lot of drawbacks to it. Uh, you do, you will have to water throughout the winter instead of saving that water. Uh, you'll, you'll, have to, you'll have to water occasionally. You will have to mow it occasionally. Uh, 
the biggest drawback to it is when spring comes around, the ryegrass is going to die. The ryegrass, about the time that it, uh, that it starts getting warm, usually late April, May, the ryegrass starts to disappear. It turns brown and ugly, and uh, the, the, basically the heat kills it. Uh, there may be parts of the world that ryegrass grows more uh, uh, for for more months because of the uh, excuse me uh, because of the longer growing season or the cooler growing season or whatever, but not here. I guess it would start to come up in you plant in October, probably November, December, January, February, March, uh, and then and then it starts to disappear. So. The problem with it is that uh, when your when your existing grass, your St. Augustine or whatever you have in your yard starts to green up in the springtime, that ryegrass is still growing because it's going to grow until till about May. Uh, so both those plants are fighting for the same moisture and the same nutrients. And nutrients, I would say, is the biggest thing. So uh, they're 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 competing for the same stuff. So it really, it takes its toll on your, on your year round grass, whatever that grass might be. So, uh, that, that's probably the biggest drawback. That is the reason there are farms that, uh, will sell overseeded grass, uh, during the winter time so that they can sell green grass. Uh, we, we quit doing it years ago because it, uh, it's, it's just too tough on the, on the grass that you're trying to have year round. So, uh, we don't do it. Uh, I guess it's got its place. The golf courses and stuff like that. That's that's exactly what they do. Uh, we don't advise it. Uh, you're, you're welcome to it, and happy to advise on, on on how to do it and whatnot. But uh, we we don't encourage anyone to do to do ryegrass. So uh, other seeds, the Bermuda grass seeds. Uh, we get we get asked about that as as well. Saint Augustine is probably the one people are most interested in. But Bermuda grass seeds again. We touched on that earlier. There is a seed for the common Bermuda grass, the one that for all intent and purposes is a weed that grows on the side of the road. Uh, you can get seeds for that. The Tifway 419, the Texturf 10, they're again, they're the uh, vegetatively propagated plants and they do not uh, they do not have a seed. You can't go buy a Tifway 419 seed or, or, or anything like that. And there's probably lots of other ones out there too. Uh, common Bermuda grass is the only one that I am aware of that uh, that you can get a seed to. So uh, that that's kind of uh, how that goes. Uh, as far as seasonal things, uh, I would like to uh, touch on a couple of things right now. We we talked about how hot and dry it is, and uh, chinch bugs. <laughs> <laughs> we there's not a summer that goes by here. I don't I, I don't know that there's a wet enough summer that we've that we've had since I've been doing this that we haven't had to talk about chinch bugs at least a little bit. I've noticed that my uh, my neighborhood is 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 eat up with them right now. Uh, I was trying to get a video of some the other day and uh, they just they just weren't there. It's, it, it rained a couple of times in the last week. I don't know if that ran them off a little bit, but you can see that the damage is is just. Uh, glaring uh along the roadside where they where they can't where the neighborhood doesn't irrigate and if you're not irrigating if the, so when i say irrigate i mean one inch of water per week uh if you're putting out one inch of water per week preferably two one half inch waterings uh you'll keep the chinch bugs at bay uh it's the people that are hoping that it rains next week so they don't have to turn on that water uh and it doesn't doesn't happen it gets a little bit drier You'll usually see it where, where concrete intersects, where a sidewalk hits a driveway or something like that. All that heat is radiating onto that, onto that section of grass. And that's where it will start and it will appear. You'll come home at five o'clock from work, pull in the driveway and look over, oh, the grass is a little dry over there. It might just be a hot spot, uh, but those chinch bugs look for drought stressed grass and that's where they start. They look like a, a little, a little gnat, uh, Usually if you get down there, the more mature ones, as they fold their wings across their back, they make a little white X across their back. So uh, that's kind of how you can identify them. And when you have them, you know it. You, if you crouch down and kind of spread the grass uh, where the brown grass is meeting the green grass, they're moving into that green grass. Usually along those perimeters is where you where you really see them. And uh, they're easy to get rid of. Obviously the best way to, is to prevent them showing up. And that is through watering. If you do have them, 
there are lots of products out there uh, that you, you need to use a spray one. So it's contact killer. Uh, we carry one called Sayonara. There's a lot of other ones out there that will work. That you put on the end of your hose and spray out there. A couple of treatments uh, will usually take care of them. Uh, but they are uh, their effect of life if, you, if you're not if you're not watering and, and when they eat your saint augustine they uh nothing comes back but weeds as as they eat it it kills the grass dead so it's not coming back you usually notice the weeds and the common bermuda is what will take over those areas that those areas will have to be removed and replaced with saint augustine once you once you kill them in that area start watering again but you're going to have to replace those areas where they've been or, or weeds will beat it to the punch more, more often than not, especially the, as the areas get bigger. If it's a square foot or something like that, the St. Augustine might be able to recover something like that. But uh, when you get into the larger areas, you're going to, uh, you're going to have to replace the grass. So uh, keep, keep that in mind. And uh, the easiest way is to prevent them from showing up and that's with, with water. So uh, we're also seeing, I, I've seen a little bit in my yard, uh, but I will, uh, we're, we're getting phone calls about summer patch. Uh, people call us and say, oh, I've got brown patch in the yard and it's, it's not brown patch. The brown patch is during the transition times when you've got cool nights and warm, uh, warm days. We're not getting those. There is no cool nights. We're, we're, a cool night is 83 degrees. So uh summer patch is pretty much as it's been explained to me uh it's pretty much the same fungus uh as as brown patch it looks the same the only difference is that instead of that perfect circular pattern that normally brown patch has uh summer patch is more erratic and uh you still get the yellowing of the grass and uh you get the the, the bright yellow perimeters and stuff like that but it's just an erratic pattern uh it shows up when it gets real hot and real humid is, is when it shows up. Uh, it's traditionally not much of a problem. Uh, you don't want to just let it go though. Uh, it, Heritage G is the same thing that we sell for, for brown patch. We'll take care of it. Uh, a couple of applications that you see it show up and you, you put it out and then you put it out whatever 14 or 21 days later. Uh, two applications and it will it will knock it back uh, really good. You, you put it out there, water it in, and it'll it'll stop it in its tracks uh, more often than not. So uh, that's that's something to to keep in mind. So uh, those are kind of two issues. Make make sure you're make sure you're staying on top of that watering right now. People are asking about fertilizer. Uh, if the the super turf is what we recommend putting out right now, uh, the nitrofall super turf. Uh, it's got the slow release nitrogen in it. So you don't burn the grass or you're less apt to burn your grass, uh, when it's just so hot and so dry, uh, that should have been done a, a little earlier in the summer, real early in the summer is when we, is normally when you put that out, uh, late May, uh, June, uh, you can also put out another application of it, I believe in, uh, at the, at the end of summer before we get into the fall special, which will be, uh, later or mid to late fall. So, uh, I, I wouldn't worry about fertilizer, frankly, near as much as it's just, just that water. If, if you stay on top of that watering, make sure your irrigation system, turn it on. We, we encourage people not to run it in the middle of the night. We'd rather you run it at four or five o'clock in the morning. I, I like, that's when I run mine before everybody gets in the shower and we lose all the water pressure, but you don't want that grass to sit wet all night long. That's when you start getting fungus problems and stuff like that. So, uh, uh, we'll do, doing that watering, but, uh, making sure you turn that irrigation system on sometimes while you're awake, uh, go out there and check those heads and make sure that you're getting a hundred percent coverage because wherever you are not, uh, I can assure you, assure you that, that that's when the chinch bugs show up. You've got a, a, a rotor head that's covering a couple hundred square feet and it's not, not working or it's shooting off in the street or something like that. Uh, and, and, and you'll lose that grass if those chinch bugs show up. So checking on that irrigation system and, and making sure you're getting good water uh, is that's, that's the name of the game this time of year. Next month is August. We're probably going to be playing this game uh, for, for a couple more months. So. Uh, that, that's about all I have right now. Uh, 
if you've got any questions, please, please give us a call. We are selling grass. We, we tell people, people are kind of surprised when they call us this time of year and y'all, y'all selling grass. Grass is all we have to sell. The only way we pay our bills is with, is with, with selling grass. We are not, a uh, 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 landscape supply place that has rocks and mulch and stuff like that plants to sell uh all we do is sell grass we sell grass year round uh when it when the grass goes dormant and, and brown it, it's kind of kind of ugly but we're selling it then too so uh in that case you're buying a root system uh, and it's not very pretty to look at but it, it serves its purpose and uh we're, we're here year round to answer questions or sell you grass or fertilizer or fungicide those, those are those are that's our forte so uh anyways give us a call if you have any questions and thanks for listening